Hello Oshkosh community, this is Edward Kastner from Making It Happen. Tonight, to my left, I have my friend Zachary. He's a, he's a meningitis survivor, plus he's a really good friend of mine, and it's a, and it's a real honor for him to, to be on my show. Um, thanks, for, thanks for being on my show, Zach. You're welcome, Ed. So, um, let's talk about before you got sick. Now, um, did you know, did you know stuff, did you know anything what's going on, or how did you say, hey, what's, you know, I, how were you feeling? You know, you, you knew something wasn't right. Yeah, uh, I did, I woke up at, um, with a headache, well, about, like a regular day of school. Okay. And then, uh, um. How long did your headache last? Oh, for a while. Yeah, I didn't eat, eat anything or drink anything. Uh, and, uh, um. Was your headache, was it pretty, was it, was it the worst headache you ever had? Was it pounding? How was, how did you feel? Uh, I, uh, just didn't feel right and stuff. I didn't want to eat anything or drink anything. And then, um, I had a high blood, uh, um, high fever and stuff and that didn't go away. Do you remember how high it was? It was 106 one. Okay. Because they say you should go to the hospital when it's like 103, 104. So that's that's danger zone. So that's even past danger zone. Yeah. So. We took, I took ibuprofen, and okay. that's when it spiked up to that. Oh, point. it took. So ibuprofen didn't even help. Okay. No. Okay. It didn't help either. And okay. um, then my mom dropped everything from hair styling, and she took me to Berlin, and um, I I couldn't even stay awake for answering questions or anything uh, and stuff they had to keep on waking me up and stuff taking a high uh, blood pressure um for me and stuff and then she said that was uh i'm just gonna miss a couple of days of school yeah because there was flu season it was march yeah. and um <clears throat> so uh, i went home and i went to bed on the couch and then I woke up at three in the morning. I had to go to the bathroom, and I'm not a person that cries all the time or anything like that. Yeah. I'm a brave person. Yes, you and, are. Uh, You're very courageous. Yes. And when I w stand up and took a couple of steps, I went back down because it, my legs started tingling so bad. Yeah. And uh, after that, um, my dad came in and asked, "What's wrong?" I'm like, "My legs are starting tingling, and I gotta go to the bathroom." And um, so he had it uh, with me uh, underneath my arm to get me going and stuff. So I did that, and then he turned on the light because he had to go to work. He had to get ready for work anyways. Yeah. Well, that didn't turn out. He had to go to work. He had to take me back to the hot. They had to take me back to the hospital because they didn't want the uh, ambulance to come because it was Sheriff County. It's well, it's not that far, but it had to resuscitate person. It takes that long. And they wanted to keep me uh, alive, and it looked yeah. like uh, kids who did like magic polka dot, purple. Yeah. Dots all over. Because I, 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 I think you said you were you were getting black from head to toe. But let's backtrack before you before you got sick. Were you pretty active? Yeah, I was pretty active. Did you do uh, any, Did you do any sports or anything? Or I did uh, t-ball, coach pitch. Yeah, t-ball and coach pitch. My dad was the coach of both, for both uh, baseball th seasons and stuff. So and then, were you pretty good at t-ball? Yeah, I was. And I was good at coach pitch. And what, what's coach pitch? Coach pitch is who I, the coach throws the ball to you. Okay. And um, so, and you hit it, and then it's like a regular baseball game. Well, so, those people out there that, you know, those people out there that are, are Maybe um, struggling to like are going through a some type of disorder that they don't know what it is. What do you what What's your message to them? Like if they don't know what it is, you know. Um, I I would just have to say, um, not to if give, it's the flu, if it's the flu, you just have to take the doctor's word. Yeah, not to give up either. Like. Yeah, if you can't up. if you can't figure out keep going to doctor to doctor until until a doctor's willing to help you. Yeah. Because that's true. because with your meningitis now 
you had you told me the other day that you had your blood tested by I think it was every lab in Wisconsin. They were trying to figure out what was going on with you. Yeah. So, um, did you have a lot of friends before you were sick? Oh yeah, I was very popular. Yes. Mm-hmm. With the ladies too. <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> not um, girlfriends. I not never girlfriends. had a girlfriend. No, no. Um, uh, what, what, what I was gonna say is. After you got sick, did you notice some of your friends start to drop because of your condition and stuff? No. No? They still stuck by you yeah. and stuff? Good. And, like, how was how was your school years before you got sick, academic-wise and that kind of stuff? It was good. I, I had A's and B's and C's. Yeah? Because I, I was in resource. Okay. Uh, before I got sick, I had... Um, special um, yeah. kind of needs, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. But, but yeah, so recess was always a big thing when I was in school. And you, what, what did you like to do at recess? Um, we had a like, study hall and um, I had like special classes for reading and okay. math and stuff I didn't have to go through algebra or um, or arithmetic or anything like that. <laughs> are, you, are you good? At, are you good at math? Not really. No, me either. Um, I was gonna say, um, but now, but what? How has this changed your life so far? Like, what's been the biggest transition for you? Because you caught this at fourteen. Correct. So how much? How much do you remember before you got sick? And how much? You know, how much do you remember? I remember all. A lot, but it's a lot of stuff. I can, yeah, I know. But, <laughs> but what's been the biggest challenge, you know? The biggest challenge is, um, like, um, holding a gun and... Because um, you like to rifle and bow and... Um, uh, rifle, I rifle. don't bow hunt. Oh, you don't bow hunt? Okay. No. <clears throat> um, do, you have a, do you have a job right now? That you yeah. Do? I work at Diverse Options, Montal. Um, I do. That's for the fire. Is it for the fire department too, or? Yeah, I'm so down, buddy. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let me speak about oh, um, okay. Diverse Options. Um, I um, do socks production okay. for state prisons of Wisconsin. Okay. And um, I just we just started in De in December of last year. We started um, growing silverware, and they didn't they didn't give me like a whole batch of it uh, because they didn't know if I if I could do it and stuff. Or I, I just put myself down because um, they just gave me ten to, ten to start out with every day, and I'm like I want to do it more and stuff. I just threw a fight because I wanted to do it more, and sure enough, I, a couple weeks or months they. Uh, Gave me the whole batch of 50, 50 and I did 50 and uh, the highest I ever done, I could say today, 500. Today I, I did 500. Wow. Silverware, today. Yeah. That's a lot. You gotta be pretty proud about that too. I am. Uh, it took a long time for that go to happen and stuff. Uh, I said that I wanted to do like, do something else a different way because we have to put them like in bags and stuff you know, and there's a particular way you have to be straight and with my hand, uh, hand I work with mm -hmm. and stuff uh, it just looks crooked so I'm like can I just use the box and not the um, bags and they're like uh, today my, my boss uh, my supervisor's like yeah you can we'll see what you can do and stuff, and sure enough, I got uh, got the highest I ever did. What's uh, 500. A, what, I, I'm very proud of you. What's been the most challenging thing since, you know, since, you know, you, you kind of lost your hands and your legs to the meningitis for as far as you grabbing stuff, like, you know, what what are the most challenging things as far as that goes? Um, like I said about holding a gun, and I wanted to cook more and stuff. It's hard with that because yeah. it's the whole, I, I can feel hotness, but mm -hmm. 
um, just pre like precaution. Like th this is still where I'm reaching over to like take the pot off and stuff. That'd be hot. Uh, that would be dangerous for me because it, I'm um, touching the hot stove, mm -hmm. uh, touching the hot stove, and stuff like that. And what else? Mm, uh, yeah. Just those yeah. specific like, subjects. Because you can still feed yourself and stuff like that, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I do like microwaving yeah. food and, and stuff, and that goes out great. And stuff but do you ever have flashbacks from when you were little or do you ever have dreams at all or yeah yeah i remember when i was young and stuff mm. you don't have nightmares or nothing do you not much from when you were okay not because of my my second or so. yeah that's what i thought and and then no and then no battle with depression you, you know you don't get down on yourself you know um occasionally occasionally yeah yeah not all the time but you know your days. Yeah, and but you're a strong person, and you've 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 gone through a lot. So, do you remember? Do you remember the first 24 hours at all? Yeah, I remember just going to school, doing schoolwork and stuff. And then after one, I think after lunch, I called my mom or my grandma, whoever. And yeah, it was my grandma because I called her up because mom was busy doing work and stuff and. Grandma goes like, "Hey, yeah, I I got something going on right now and st stuff. I can um, pick you up and stuff to try to call mom again. So I called mom, or she called school or something, and uh, she took me from school because of the headache that I wouldn't want to go away and stuff. And then, you know, like I said before, yeah. I had to go to Berlin and yeah. And then did Berlin figure out what was going on or? Um, not at that time. It was always, uh, it was, they were saying it was the flu. I missed a couple of days of school. Did you, then, have, did you have to be transferred from Berlin then, or? That, that next morning, yeah. Okay, well, where did you go from Berlin? I went to uh, Feeder Clark, because uh, they called it Feeder Star Helicopter, and they took me to Feeder Clark, and then, um. Because you started turning black, right? What? Did you start turning black at that point and stuff, or? Um, not right away. Not right away? Anyway, I proceeded in the helicopter that way. Okay. And, um, they couldn't do anything at Theater Clark, so they took me to Children's House in Milwaukee. Okay. Where I spent 161 days. So that's, what, four and a half months? Yeah. And when did, when did you, uh, when did they say, Zach, because were you coherent when they said, Zach, we might have to amputate your legs? Were you, were you, I, were you, were you awake then at that point, or do you remember I that? I think I was in a coma. Okay. Probably a good thing, right? Probably. Oh, wow, well, I want I, uh, I would be kind of sad about it, but God had a plan. Yeah. And he does it, he does it for a reason, right? Right. Has it made you, a, has this... Has this, has this made you a stronger person? Yeah, it has. How so? Um, just in general, like mm -hmm. trying to prevent the sickness and enjoying life more better. And can we can we pull up the statistics about the the, the, men, the meningitis right now and the and the, the different kinds? Um. Which Zach, which kind did you have again? I had bacterial. You had the bacterial. It's a, and the bacteria gets into the blood and brain and spinal cord and causes damage such as brain damage loss. Is and is that why you have the hearing loss too? Kind of. Yep. With the cold killer and. Yep. And it cuts off circulation too, like it did with the ears and stuff. Yep. The legs. When did? And I know. Your mom probably knows, but when did they have to get like? When did they have to get rid of the legs? Don't know. Right after I woke up. I think. Right after you woke up. Okay. Um, and Zach, I want you to look at the camera and tell how people how important how it is to get screened and you know because you want you want to push health screening. I want you to look at the camera and just tell people how important it is to get screened and because it. 
meningitis is very, is, well, any condition is very serious, but this is a very important deal. And, you know, if somebody doesn't know, can you tell them about the warning signs and just tell them how important it is? Um, so, this was very important for people that get vaccinated. And, um, because um, it's a serious illness and you could die from it. And what some of the warning signs are a headache, being fatigued, uh, um, sickness to your stomach, I think. Um, a big one is, uh, which I didn't have, um, was uh, stiff neck. I never had a stiff neck. Okay. Yeah. Is there any other ones? Um, chills, chills. Anything like pretty much a flu, and that's why doctors say it's just a flu, because that's what it looks like. And until until you get it treated or someone says you got bacterial meningitis. Yeah. And stuff. Which. So it's very what, serious. It's not nothing yeah. you joke around about, right? Right. Um. Which they did that morning, uh, right away when we got in. Stuff. So one doctor took a good look at me, and right away, that's she was the one who caught the helicopter and stuff. And then after that, she told uh, my parents that your son is really, really sick. Mm -hmm. And that's when they heard back to meningitis. Yeah. Um, at that point, did you ever feel ho hopeless, or did you ever feel like you were going to die? No. I uh, I was very a beat a beat. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I never want to give up my life. Yeah. Well, a, a lot of people would be like being really sick. You know, it, it's it's difficult. You know, it's hard. So, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't blame you if you were hopeless and stuff. Mm -hmm. And do we want to pull up those one eight hundred numbers for the? For the for the, for the meningitis f foundations, please the local one and national one. Um, Zach, do you want to do you, do you want to do this intro? Do you want to tell them to call if they have any questions or anything? Yeah. You know. Is that the bacterial meningitis? Yeah, that's the yeah. yeah, that's the bacterial meningitis number. So. Uh, what? Well, didn't you have that one from? The like the Warner Meningitis uh, yeah, Foundation gave you? Yeah, I gave you the, or we have the national one and local ones. So. Okay. So. Okay. Um. How did it? Okay. On that note, I know your mom's not in here, but how did it affect your mom and dad and? It it, it affected everybody in my family, with my brother, and my mom and dad, and my grandparents, everybody, pretty much who knew me. Yeah. And, Stuff. Oh. And just to give everybody a statistic here, menin meningitis affects about about 3,000 people a year. That's quite the number. And if you don't know, please get tested because you you know if you're if you if you if you're trying to figure out what's wrong, don't don't wait around. Don't 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 mess around with it because it's a very serious condition. As you can see by Zach over here that. Uh, things can happen, but it's not the end of your life. No. You know, you can still live a self-fulfilling life and stuff. And, um, let's see. How long did it take you to get used to your new normal? Um, it took a long time. What kind of stuff did you have to go through? Um, a lot of intense therapy sessions and just learning how to walk again. Well, not that right away. Um, just w walking on my knees. Um, how how long did some of that stuff take? It took months, I would say, and not years. But how long were you in the like rehab process? Um, three months, I think. I don't know. Three, three, longer, yeah. Longer than that. Yeah. What do you think? Why don't you think you gave up? Because you were a strong person, or because a lot of people, if they're that sick, you know, some people might not have the determination and the, in, you know, as you do. So what? What kept you going? Um, just my family and 
trends on God, and that's pretty much about it. I don't mm-hmm. know. You probably prayed to him a lot, huh? And saying, please get me through this, you know. Mm-hmm. And so. a lot of people were praying for me, too, my family yeah. you know, and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Um, as far as your prosthetics goes, when did you get fit with the pro- with prosthetics? Um, in the same year, I think. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. Was it hard to walk on them? Yes, it was. How uh, long did- I had to walk with a walker in the beginning. And- How long did it take to get used to them? Um, a year, I think. I don't know. Okay. I can't remember that. Because part. they're like brand new legs, right? Right. I, I got pictures of yep. that in the mm-hmm. show. Sure. <clears throat> And see, Dad, this this show goes out to my dad too because my dad lost his leg because of health of uh, of infections in his leg. So this this proves to you that you can do it, and I will be by your side every 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 chance you get. So I just want to tell you I love you, and you know you it's it's proof that you can that you can still walk. And and like my doctor told me the other day, he said if anybody can get my dad to walk again, it's me. So I'm gonna push you. <laughs> well, I'm not walking here, but. I got uh, these are my first legs and uh, stuff I'm standing on them on. So, okay. but I, so, yeah, and then just going back, uh, it's all black goes. Hey, Zach, did you ever get, you know, when, when, when you, um, when you, Lost your legs and and when you were a- amputee, you know, from the, the meningitis, did you ever get picked on, like, you know, by anybody? Did you ever get teased? Nope. Never, huh? I don't think so. Okay. I, I wouldn't want to be. No, I know. It's just, but you know, life is cruel sometimes. So people mm-hmm. people pick on each other. You know, it's. Yeah. Yeah. So this is like, oh, oh, black. I was uh, pretty much wow. all the way down. That's all black. I was. Wow, it was almost like charcoal, huh? Yep. <clears throat> so, Zach, on that note, which way does it, or how did this test your faith? How did this meningitis test your faith? Um, it tested me a great way. Yeah. Um, because I, I knew I couldn't do it as much as I used to, but I try. Mm-hmm. I don't never give up. Yep, and you got friends that love you, including me, and, and, and respect you for who you are. Mm-hmm. Um, and can we bring up the meningitis web- websites again for if pe- and the contact numbers if people want to contact? Okay. So if somebody wants to contact the, if somebody wants to contact the national Meningitis Foundation phone number. It is 1-800-668-1129. And I'll, I'll repeat that again. 1-800-668-1129. And it's, like I said, it's very important to get tested, even if it's not meningitis and it's something serious. Uh, please do it and... Because like I said earlier, it affects 3,000 some people. So it's... Um, what was the biggest challenge for your, mo- for your mom with dealing with this disorder? You know, like... Um, like probably putting her legs on. And, yeah. Um, I've been trying to like um, put the legs on myself too and stuff, which I'm really good at. But... Yeah. Sometimes I get like air bubbles or something, and then it starts. Ex- to talk. Explain what an air bubble is. I don't know what an air bubble is. Explain what an air bubble is. Uh, air bubble is like you put your, put like your liner on. Yeah. And stuff, and you're not down inside it properly. Okay. And it just makes air uh, makes air bubbles. 
and um, so yeah, that, that that's a big thing there too. You get the air bubbles. Uh, that's how you get sores. Okay. So does it pop then, or how does it? If there's an air bubble. Uh, if there's an air, air bubble, you could see it inside a li inside a liner. Okay. And it looks like um, like puffed up or something. And then you just go around it, you go around it, smooth it out, and get those air bubbles out and stuff like that. So. How long did it take you to adjust to this whole process? Because it was, you said it was months and months and months, but how did it, how did it, how did it test you mentally? It tested me a great, a great time. And, much. and how long after the, how long after the, the diagnosis, did they figure out your, oh, your, your hearing is gone to, you know, your hearing, because you have a cochlear implant. Yeah, and a hearing aid, yep. So how long after after you got the prosthetics and stuff, did they notice something about your hearing right away, or? Um, I'm guessing. I yeah. have no idea. Yeah. How scared were you when you found out you were going to lose your legs? Were you scared? Yeah, I, everybody would probably be scared if yeah. they're going to lose their leg. Because you went, you went from a normal, you know, you went from a, a normal running around active kid to, you know, so. But is, is there anything that you want to say to the audience before we close here in closing remarks about, you know, your condition, about not giving up? Because you know, I'm sure if some, I'm I'm sure somebody they would like to hear a message directly from you. So. Yeah, um, I would say um, let's please get vaccinated. Oh, save a life, and um, yeah, and I'm thankful for being alive and learning all kinds of different things and trying to get back on. On recovery and, so. and and what do you want to say to your family and friends that supported you during that time? I would say thank you for supporting me and keep on supporting. Never give up. Yep, and 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 you're a pretty courageous individual. So, so yeah. Um, I just thank you for your fight and determination. And and in closing, if you have a show idea, you know email me, it's not in the graphics, but my website's down, so email me at edwardcastern at yahoo.com, and um, I will see you next time. Thank you.